Hey everyone, this is Lucas Acosta, and I am joined by Justin McGow here on the Fuji team, and welcome to episode number five, five. of the Fuji Show. That's right. You know, this episode, we're going to go into iOS 10 for businesses. Okay, so iOS 10 is the new operating system, right, coming out for the iPhone yep. and the iPad. And if you want to learn about all the new features coming out, you know, uh, Apple.com has features. I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube other YouTube videos, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, like the quick tips and yeah, like showing the, the off hidden, what's coming. The hidden features, yeah. there's lots of those. We watch those. Yeah. But we thought it would be good to just highlight what businesses should know, right? Um, I don't know how many of you are running the beta iOS 10. Um, I just updated to the be public beta 4. Are you running iOS 10? I'm not. And I think that brings up a good conversation. Okay. If you're a. This Not is just where a, Justin slaps yeah, my hand. I, no, I, I'm just being a, a bit conservative here, and that's it's it's fine. Um, I think if you're not a business owner, but if if you're not quite as tech savvy, or you don't want to deal with cr a lot of crashing or little, or seeing little bugs, yeah. you've got your workflow, and you don't want to be interrupted. I would probably not recommend you try the iOS 10 public beta. Uh, it's is it's pretty stable, I think. But if you want to just kind of Keep rolling with your normal things. I probably wouldn't upgrade. This guy, he likes to, he likes to uh, to try out the new OSs. So I think I like to put myself in positions of suffering or something. I don't That's know good. what it is. Like um, you know, I, someone texts me, I go to text, and because it's beta software, it it doesn't bring up my keyboard. You know, as an oh, example. Oh man. So yeah, and see, I may like have that. a little mini meltdown if that happens to me. So I'm yeah. still on nine point three point. Cool. Whatever. <laughs> so, um, and you know, I want to run it so I can talk about that's good stuff like this, right? Yeah. For for right. our friends and clients, I think I think we should be able to keep this episode. I'm gonna give us a little goal here. Okay. Under ten minutes. I really think it could be five minutes, but there's always buffer for right. like conversations. So, let's just get into the show, right? Last question. Okay. I think if you're watching the show. Shout, give us a shout out and let us know what you think good time a good time is. Do do you care the difference between five minutes to ten to fifteen? If you're watching the show and it goes fifteen, is that a big deal? Like, because we want to cater the show for people who are watching this, and we want to pack it in with as much great information as possible. Right, and I think the podcasters, because we're getting some pretty good downloads on the podcast as well. Yeah, they probably won't care as much. See, um, I, I wouldn't. You know, right. I Especially if you're in Atlanta. 45 minute podcast. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Because the traffic. So. Well, okay, we can start now. But let us know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can get started. Cool. Okay. So what we want to do is uh, break this up into two different sort of categories of what's coming in iOS 10. Uh, we'll also touch on some Mac OS Sierra features because um, Apple's releasing features that apply to both operating systems. Yeah. But we'll just touch on a few that kind of apply to every... Um, Everyone who uses their device for work, right? You're a professional, you work for a company, and you have iPhones. What are just some business-related features? Um, and then what we want to do is dive into more of the administrative features. So if, if you're, like, managing iPads and iPhones, what new capabilities will you get on the back end to be able to manage, you know, your employees' devices? So let's start off with what we can call, like, work features, I right. guess. Yeah. Um, and what have you got for us so far? I think one of the biggest ones that Apple's promoting... I see banners and like search ads and everything is is the new Cisco Spark app. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and this is uh, in the VoIP realm, but I think Cisco has tried to make this seamless. Cisco seamless. Uh, make this really easy to where, yes, your phone is uh, ringing at work, um, but you can set specific times to where if, it, if you're not at your desk or it can jump straight to uh, your iPhone. And it rings straight to your iPhone. Yeah. So VoIP calling on the iPhone in the past has been a bit clunky. And certain notifications come up and you don't right know where to swipe. That happens for me sometimes. But in iOS 10, uh, it's actually going to look like a normal phone call. So it, it'll say coming from Spark or coming from Skype or one of those, those VoIP services, right? Right. So uh, basically what's happening is these, these VoIP apps to make phone calls through your business line are being like promoted to the phone level um, of apps. Yeah. So they're going to take up the whole screen when someone calls, you know, swipe to answer, just like a regular. Just like a normal phone call. Phone call. I think that's great. That'll be cool. They're, and I think the Cisco Spark app, now that they've moved up in the priority, I mm -hmm. think it's just the beginning. 
I think yes, see, exactly. I think we're going to see that more. So apparently Daniel's telling us we're already at five minutes. Five um, minutes. That's one feature. All right, what's next? <laughs> cool. Um, I think a, a really important public service announcement mm -hmm. is that iOS 10 will not be compatible with iPad 2s. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of iPad 2s out there. Yeah. Like schools, I, businesses. Absolutely. A lot. Dealing with fleets. Will so. your iPad still work? Yeah, it's still, it'll still work on iOS 9 right. point whatever. Um, but some of these new features that are coming out with iOS 10, it won't technically work. So. Right. Yeah, okay. I think it's just the iPad Air. Is that it? Oh, really? Oh, that's like as far back as it goes. Yeah. I see. Even yeah. like the third generation with the mm -hmm. Retina display, I don't think that's going to work either. Okay. Oh, we can post that in the show notes or something. Yeah. Just this. Or a link to it. Kind of URL that shows all of them. Yeah. Awesome. And that kind of, does that cover it for the work-related features? Yeah, just specific, like, day-to-day -day work features. Yeah. Cool. Um, obviously, they're, they're redoing the, the iMessage app and other little, like, notification features. Um, oh, yeah. But I think specifically for work, that, that should cover it. So let's talk about some um, new, like, management features, administrative uh, features. Uh, we'll get a little nerdy here. Um, talking about the setup process for new iPads, Administrators can now disable um, the the Siri setup process, and also this new feature coming out with iOS 10 called iCloud Desktop, um, which is going to be a really interesting feature where everything on your Mac's desktop, right, mm -hmm. will be available um, on your phone and your iPad through iCloud Drive. Yeah, um, and then I think for obvious like uh, security uh, precautions. Apple's giving administrators the ability to just disable that prompt so that employees aren't, you know, moving all their desktop files to their iPhones. Yeah, I think well. mainly because it's really important each company knows where their company's data lives, right? Right, yeah. So if I had a really uh, important document that I'm working on that I need the whole team, the whole Fuji team to work on, that it's living on my desktop because I, I let it sit there and I, it's just living there no one else can access it. So right. I, that's a small little example, but I think you have to be really careful where your data lives. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so now I'm gonna go through just uh, several MDM features. I just made a bullet list here. Um, and this is kind of a, a public service announcement for what came out earlier this year. Apple did something interesting um, this year with iOS releases for businesses. It really came out with, I think, 50 to 75% of their features in the spring with iOS 9.3. Yeah. Um, and I was watching uh, the WWDC videos about this, and they just said that. They said, hey, instead of waiting for the end of the year, we wanted schools to be prepared for the new school year. That's good. So we kind of moved up our, our release date. So, um, but you may not have implemented these. Your MDM, like Mass 360 or Meraki, will now be able to, to do lost mode um, if employees' devices get lost and put uh, that device on a map okay, which has never been available for uh, businesses. And you can also have MDM activation lock. So if a device does get stolen and someone attempts to erase it and sell it, for example, yep. um, just like iCloud has had this feature, mm -hmm. it's gonna be available for business-owned devices as well via their MDM. Exactly, and, and that's important because some companies disable iCloud and iCloud activation lock. Yep. You know, where's my iPhone? Because if a person leaves or a phone gets lost, that phone is is bricked and you don't have that that person's personal iCloud information. But if it's enrolled through an MDM, you can still have that feature but be able to manage it from the company side. Exactly. Yeah. So Apple's like with each release, like letting out the rope um, to businesses, yeah. letting, you know, business owned devices have similar capabilities that iCloud has had right. you know, for a long time, which we're it's a welcome enhancement. Um, other things that, that MDM settings can now control are like notifications. So as the administrator, you can um, basically enable or disable app notifications, right? If you yeah. only want notifications coming through your employees' phones that are from business-related apps, you can make, th make that setting uh, in MDM. You can um, control the home screen layout now. If you want all business apps, for example, to be on the home page, uh, this is obviously a good uh, implementation for schools as well. Right. To have all like school apps on the home screen. Um, and what else? Uh, again, digging into the weeds here, an administrator can now manage 
what domains on in Safari will uh, can save a password into Keychain. So for wow, security yeah. reasons, you as a manager can choose which passwords are saved to um, your employees' devices and which ones are not. Um, and then lastly, you'll be able to restrict things like Apple Music, iCloud Photo Library, um, iTunes Radio, um, and then also show and hide apps as well. Yeah, that's awesome. So, show and yeah. hide apps. So these, there are a few cases where businesses want to control all of these, but um, before these weren't even an option. So, uh, and I think they're options now because these devices are getting used in more and more use cases. You're more right. and more types of businesses need. You know, they're not always controlling these, and there's a whole other conversation for like, I just want, I don't want my, you know, my team to be able to do anything on my iPhone. That could be a reason. Yeah. But I think it's important to know that it seems like it's, the the scope is just widening on how many different types of like jobs and scenarios these devices are being used. So I think it's right. great that Apple's like, hey, if that's growing, we're going to grow too. Right, like it's kind of letting out the rope a little bit. These will be good for uh, applications that, that are uh, like purpose-driven devices. Yeah, right. absolutely. Whether they're in kiosks or they're being used um, in an assembly line or manufacturing plant where they really just have one purpose, you can go ahead and you know lock these down a lot yeah. more than you used to be able to. Right. All right, so let's jump into iOS 10 specific features. Um, this is cool. So it touches on what Justin mentioned earlier about uh, VoIP apps being able to uh, take up the, the whole screen whenever uh, phone calls come in, like through your Skype app or through your Cisco app. Um, now what an administrator can do is set a default phone app for business contacts. This is kind of a weird concept. What this means is um, if, if your organization uses Google Apps, for example, you can say all contacts that are syncing through Google Apps use the Cisco app by default. Yeah. And so whenever you go and call someone, it happens to be a business contact that synced from your Google Apps account, you know, managed by your company, it'll automatically make that call without the user thinking about it. It'll make it through the Cisco app, you know, or whichever VoIP app sure. or phone system, you know, your company uses. Yeah. So the MDM spec will allow administrators to control that. Kind of cool. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really interested to see VoIP apps if if the battery life changes, oh all. yeah, interesting. A whole another whole another can of worms, but yeah, because like there's been a lot of work I could I would assume from Apple and carriers AT and T, Verizon, T Mobile yeah. to really make phone calls very power efficient. So what's going to happen when all these third party apps start making phone calls? Yeah. Or will it be worse? Good one. Interesting. So this is interesting. Um, PPTP which is a VPN protocol, Good old right? VPN. Right? Yep. Um, it's one of the older VPN protocols, yeah. is no longer being supported in iOS 10 or Mac OS. Okay, wow. PPTP isn't used as much, but there are certain, a uh, few environments that, that we come across with that are still using PPTP VPN. So now's the time to start, if you are still using VPN, to start reworking your network um, to make it L2TP or take advantage of newer VPN technologies um, because that VPN setting will not even be an option when iOS 10 comes out. Right, so if you have a lot of new devices in your environment, new Macs, and they're gonna eventually run Sierra, um, what if your network infrastructure is a bit older? Which network infrastructure can last a pretty long time. Mm -hmm. So that's important to know your focus is on these machines, but but with no PPTP for, for VPN, you may want to take a peek into your network infrastructure yeah. and, and see if you have any settings. And uh, this leads right into the next one. Apple has partnered with Cisco. I think I mentioned this a few episodes ago. To develop uh, Cisco-specific networking features that directly enhance Apple devices on Cisco networks. Uh, really interesting partnership that we haven't really uh, seen um, in the past. And one thing they're going to allow you to do is bypass um, captive Wi-Fi networks. So if it knows that it's an employee iPhone, um, it'll automatically bypass that captive portal on your company's Wi-Fi network, right? So little things like that. Yeah. Same More importantly, um, 
Cisco, uh, with Cisco routing equipment, you'll be able to have uh, quality of service marking and choose apps that get higher priority traffic. Okay. Yeah. Um, to give you an example of that, you can say that we use WebEx in this organization. We're going to make sure that all uh, network traffic from the WebEx app is more important, higher priority than, say, YouTube traffic and Netflix traffic or whatever it might be. If you got 30 people streaming Pandora. <laughs> if you got 30 people streaming Apple Music. Which a while in office come which across. happens a lot. It's <laughs> yeah. nice to know that you don't necessarily have to tell the people to not stream Apple you Music. You don't want to because mm -hmm. you've got specific apps bump bumping up to the top of the priority list. I like right. it. Yeah, yeah that's good. Um, next, um, Apple and, at WWDC announced that they're actually um, deprecating certain features in MDM spec, um, like certain restrictions, if devices are not supervised. Okay, uh, meaning if a device is uh, is not enrolled into DEP, it hasn't been proved that it's owned by the business. And what Apple is going to be doing is moving certain restrictions over to only be available if it's a supervised device. Yeah. Okay, going back to the whole notion that Apple really um, takes end users' privacy and um, their their productivity as as a um, priority over business needs, right. they're going to basically force businesses to enroll their devices into DEP. So what that means um, is certain settings like being able to disable FaceTime or being able to disable um, iTunes restrictions, like what content you can download right. will only be available if your device is supervised. And okay. if you're watching this and DEP is is kind of a, that sounds new to you, we have a whole, a whole um, episode on DEP that you can go back and watch, but you can also reach out to us. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, and just a couple of things um, coming toward the end here uh, that have to do with Mac OS. So Mac OS Sierra that's coming out this fall. Sierra. Um, along with iOS, an iOS feature that came out earlier this year, administrators will now be able to force upgrade user devices to the latest operating system. This has never been available before. Yeah. Um, but if it's a supervised device mm -hmm. enrolled in DEP, you will be able, uh, as, as a company, force everyone um, through a certain MDM command to go ahead and upgrade to the next operating system. Um, so cool. just the, they're coming out with more and more reasons to go ahead and set up DEP for your organization. A uh, little bit of legwork, but in our experience, if, if you can move it along pretty quick, it only takes about a week to start getting your devices enrolled into DEP. Yeah, it's a free service anyway. Mm -hmm. so. Um, and then the other new restriction is also on the Mac. You can disable iCloud Photo Library. If you'd rather um, photos not sync to people's private iCloud account, you can disable that too. Oh, yeah. last question. Uh, this came from a comment on the last episode. Um, I'm failing his name. So sorry. Uh, but it was a great question. The question was, can you talk about um, Apple Watch and then why businesses might adopt it? I believe his organization adopted it for like health reasons, yeah. uh, health benefits. Um, happy to, to chat on that. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, we've seen a few companies that are starting to give Apple Watches, um, uh, incorporate as part of their health initiatives to track fitness and whatnot. Um, that's the one thing that I love about my Apple Watch. Right. But one um, drawback up to this point is that the sharing features have been kind of limited. You need to use uh, some third-party apps mm -hmm. to really get the sharing features, Fitbit has really done a great job to allow yeah. companies to sign up and you know see stats and charts about how everyone is stacking up against each other. Um, this fall with with uh, Watch OS three, yep, there will be more fitness sharing capabilities. So it yeah. might even be a better time. Even uh, native, some that. of the not, not even through third party, but like native sh sharing apps. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Apple hasn't said any of this. This is purely speculation on my part. Uh -oh. But I wonder if, with um, if Apple comes out with a new Apple Watch this fall, okay. if the current Apple Watch might be reduced in price, going purely by Apple's you know, patterns that you see with their iPhones and yeah. iPads, they usually keep that older device around at a, at a lower entry point. Yeah. So if you're considering getting watches for your organization. I would say wait about a month because I think the next uh, Apple event is rumored to be in September. Um, I forget which date, September 9th-ish. 
around yeah, that time. Around there. It's always um, fun. So we're not too far away from all this yeah. dropping, um, and then we'll get a bit more information yeah. on what that looks like. My quick take is that it's nice to be able to be in touch, have a pulse on what's going on uh, throughout your day, and not have to take your phone out of your pocket, yeah. purse, man bag, whatever you've got. Um, mm -hmm. You can actually just keep it stowed away in there or in your briefcase, and if you need to just take a quick a quick peek at what's going on, it's pretty easy to do. I, I think that is um, usable in your personal life and very easily usable in your professional life as well. Yeah, awesome, thanks. Um, so I wanna do a shout out to something for everyone to look out for. Um, we, we're really excited because we are going, well, I don't wanna spill the beans, what I want to encourage you to do is go sign up for Gary Vaynerchuk's uh, newsletter because you might see a very familiar um, name on next week's newsletter by Gary Vaynerchuk. He's, uh, I'm a huge fan of his. I know many of us here at Fuji are, um, and we're collaborating on something um, that I think will be pretty fun. So don't say I didn't warn you. Go sign up for his newsletter. Uh, newsletter at GaryVaynerchuk.com and I think Daniel's going to put like some the yeah, right way to spell it in the show notes right there cool well thanks for watching keep the questions coming whether you want to hashtag us um, on thank you on any of the, the social media sites right. Instagram uh, Twitter Ask or you just want to comment on this video we'd love to answer your questions yeah. so thanks for watching thanks, we'll guys. see you in a couple weeks Hey, thanks for watching. If you find value in these episodes, be sure to subscribe so you'll get notified every time a new one is released.